Welcome back in, everybody. Jay Douglas here with you, bringing you another NHL podcast. It's going to be the trade trade deadline edition of our NHL podcast. Make sure you go back and listen to our previous podcast that we've done. We have an NHL Week 3 podcast up as well. Make sure you go check that out, taking a look at the NHL standings, taking a look at previewing the week ahead, and seeing if there could be some fluctuation in the standings. But it was a busy week. In the NHL last week, it was the trade deadline. Some big movers, some big buyers, and some surprise sellers, if you ask me. Let's go ahead and run down the list. We're going to do these in order by how we found them. So they're going to be in transaction order. So we'll just run through those. Dmitry Orloff is a defenseman. He was dealt to the Bruins from the Capitals. That's a good get for the Bruins. He's going to be a role player. He can give you some scoring if you need it. He's a good defenseman. I think he's going to give the Bruins that extra oomph that they need to solidify them as being the best team in the NHL. We talked about them being on a 10-game win streak. They obviously look like they're the best team in the NHL. Of course, they have the Esna Trophy leader, Linus Olmark, in net, who I think has only lost twice. They got a great backup goaltender in Jeremy Swayman. That's where it all starts in the NHL, at the goaltending position, and the Bruins adding that defenseman. That's going to give them that extra, not that they needed it, but I think that fur, that further solidifies the Bruins as the team to beat, not only in the Eastern Conference, but in the whole NHL. The next player on our list is Nino Niederreiter. He was dealt to the Winnipeg Jets from the National Predators. This is an interesting trait. Because Niederreiter, I think he plays on the third line. If not, he's a second line kind of middle of the road scorer. He's a good player. He's not going to be your superstar, but he is a great role player that I think the Preds are going to miss. The Preds right now, this move to me, it, it solidifies that they think they can make the playoffs, but they're also kind of thinking big picture. They're not trying to win the cup this year. If they make the playoffs, that's great. That's what this deal looks like to me. And we'll talk about another deal that kind of solidifies that opinion of them to me. It's a big hit for the Winnipeg Jets. They're trying to make the playoffs. They're trying to maybe run a Cinderella red carpet up to the Stanley Cup. That's a good get for the Winnipeg Jets playing alongside just some players. I don't know what line Niederreiter is going to play on, but against the likes of Kyle Connor, Blake Wheeler, you think of on the defense, Mark Shifley, Josh Morrissey. I think the Winnipeg Jets, that's a good get for them. A questionable move by the Preds, but a great pickup by the Jets to go out and get him. We move to the next name on our list, which is Ivan Barbashev. He went from the Blues to the Vegas Golden Knights. This is, again, a pick up for the Knights. A great pickup. A third-line guy, going to be a role scorer, going to put up those goals when you need them. He's not going to be your superstar. He's not going to score every night. But when you need a big goal or you need a big play, Barbashev can certainly be that player for the Vegas Golden Knights. The Blues right now are on the outside looking in as far as playoffs go. They're at 59 points in the Central, which in wildcard positioning puts them, what, about 13 or so points out? About 15 points. 15 points on the outside looking in right now. So that's definitely a sell move. They weren't going to make the postseason anyways. They're trying to build their team for next year. That's that move. That's what that move screams to me. A big get for the Vegas Golden Knights. Another big pickup. This is for the Devils now. They picked up Timo Meyer from the San Jose Sharks. The Sharks, like we talked about on our last podcast, one of the worst teams in the NHL. They're building for next year. That's a big get for the Devils playing along Bart Dawson Mercer, Nico Heeshear, uh, Jesper Bratt, Dougie Hamilton. Oh, there's one other player that I'm blanking on that plays for the Devils. He literally just scored the other night against the Coyotes, but I can't remember his name. But that's a big get for the Devils, and I think that's going to help them maybe challenge the Hurricanes for that Metro division. Now, I don't know if the Devils are good enough to get past the Hurricanes in the postseason, but this could definitely close that gap a little bit. And I think this is the biggest trade of the trade deadline. This one and the Jonathan Quick trade, which we'll get to momentarily. Patrick Kane. Out in Chicago, we talked about Chicago being one of the worst teams in the NHL. They're rebuilding for next year. You know, Jonathan Taze has been hurt this year. They're dealing with the retiring of Marion Hossa. A lot of the players that were on those Stanley Cup teams have, have either retired or they're no longer with the team. I can just think of a ton off the bat that are no longer in the league anymore. Brent Seabrook, Duncan Keith, Patrick Sharp, 
You know, Dustin Bufflin was there, although he only won one cup. He wasn't there for the whole dynasty. But you think of guys like that, Corey Crawford, the goaltender. So the Hawks are certainly in a in a rebuild and, and chipping out one of their greatest players to ever play in the franchise has solidified that they're going to try and start over next year. Jonathan Pace may go next. I'm not sure the terms of his contract, but he, he may be next on the outside as the Hawks look to enter a complete rebuild in their organization. The Rangers, we talked about Timo Meyer giving the Devils an opportunity to challenge the Hurricanes. Patrick Kane with the Rangers, that could give them the opportunity to challenge in that Metro division. Playing alongside Miko Zabinajat or Timmy Panarin. He got a great goaltender in Igor Shosturkin. There's another player who plays on the Rangers. He literally just scored the other night, and I can't think of his name. Oh, there's two of them. It's Adam Fox and uh, Capo Caco. Those are the two guys that I've seen that have, that have played very well this year for the Rangers. And Patrick Kane could slide right in and be a good fit there. And the, we talked about the Caps being sellers with the Dmitry Orloff trade. I think that's the same with Marcus Johansson. The Caps the Caps are in the same boat as the Preds because the Preds, the Preds also dealt with Kyle Granlin. So the Caps and Preds, they're both like, okay, if we make the playoffs, that's fine, but we're not going to bank on making a deep run to, to the Stanley Cup. We're not going to bank on a deep run to June or July. We're, if we make the playoffs, that's great. We're building for next year. This move of Marcus Johansson's is a rebuild move there. That's a great pickup for the Wild. Another great pickup for the Wild is Gustav Nyquist. Both those guys are going to be great. Of course, the Wild with Kapril Kaprizov. One of the greatest players, arguably the greatest player next to Connor McDavid. Connor McDavid in search of his third straight Art Ross. And I want to actually correct something right quick. I said that McDavid had won the MVP. That was not right. The Hart Trophy is the MVP, and Austin Matthews won that. But Art Ross is the leading scorer. McDavid's won that two years in a row. He's going to win it for a third year, barring something major. And he very well could win the MVP. But I do want to correct that mistake that I made on the last podcast. I do apologize. A big get right here for the Vegas Golden Knights. We just talked about goaltending for the Vegas Golden Knights to get Jonathan Quick. Now, it seems like Quick has been injured. He's a veteran. He's a little older. But Vegas is very young at the net mining position. They have Logan Thompson, who I think is hurt right now, and then Aiden Hill. Those two guys are very young. For Jonathan Quick to come in, give them some veteran leadership, give them some veteran experience, won a couple Stanley Cups, won a Conn Smythe, that's a very good get for the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, this move is surprising to me by the Arizona Coyotes. For them to get rid of Shane Goss' bear and Jake Chickering, those were two guys that you thought could build that Coyotes franchise back from the ground up. Now, I think we talked about it either at the beginning of this podcast or in the last podcast. I think the Coyotes need to address that goaltending position. The Milk is the starter, and then Connor Ingram is the backup. I remember last year, when I started watching, they had Scott Wedgwood on the team. And to my knowledge, I thought Wedgwood was the starter. And they dealt him to Dallas. And he's been backing up Jake Ottinger. So I think that Arizona needs to address that goaltending position. For Carolina and Ottawa, respectively, those are great pickups. Ottawa is a very hot team right now. And you, we always talk about defense. We talk about defense in any other sport. Football, basketball, you know, baseball. You want good defenders. You need that blue line to be protected. And for Carolina to add Gostas Bear on the blue line, and for Ottawa to add Chikrin, I think that's going to help them. Ottawa may be playing their way into the postseason, and Carolina trying to solidify their top spot in the Metro Division. And now we go to Detroit, who this surprised me. I've already mentioned this. Detroit has dealt Philip Heronic, they have dealt Tyler Bertuzzi, and they have dealt uh, Jacob Verona. Three guys who you thought were going to help rebuild that Detroit franchise, especially Bertuzzi, who I think was playing when I when I was watching back in 2019 before I started watching a couple years ago. But three guys who you thought were going to be cogs in that machine, gone. Heronic to Vancouver, Bertuzzi to Boston, and then Verona to St. Louis. I don't know about that Bertuzzi get in Boston. I don't really think that adds anything. I think they got a ton of forwards. They got a ton of power, a ton of scoring. I really think the Bruins need to add defense, which is what they did with Orlov. So I don't really know how Bertuzzi is going to pan out with Boston. We already talked about Mikhail Granlin. Nick Bukestad. 
from Arizona to Edmonton. That's a big get for the Oilers. We talk about Connor McDavid. We talk about Leon Dreisaitl. Where's the third score? You think that it is Zach Hyman. You think that it's Ryan Nugent Hopkins. On, on defense, you know, you think that you have a Darnell Nurse or a Cody Ceci. Th- those guys putting up some, some goals when you need them. Nick Dusat, a power forward, physical guy. He might give you that game-breaking goal. Say McDavid and Dreisad are having off games. Say that Hyman and Nugent Hopkins aren't playing well. Bukestad could come in and get that key goal you need at the right time. But like other teams, I think Edmonton needs to address that goaltending position. And I've seen a lot of posts on Twitter that Edmonton also does not have good defense. So maybe Edmonton should have looked to have addressed their defense first rather than bringing in kind of a physical power forward to to maybe help them with some role scoring there. And the last name on this list is Max Domi heading to Dallas. Chicago, like we talked about, they're big sellers in the midst of that rebuild. Max Domi could be a good role scorer for Dallas. I'm trying to think of Dallas's big names. Of course, you got Tyler Sagan, who's been playing since I started watching hockey. Jamie Benn, same there. And then they got a couple other role players. I think uh, Robertson's one of them. There's another guy who I, who I want to say scored against Colorado on Saturday who I can't remember. But that, that'll be a good fit, I think, for Dallas with Max Domi coming in. So all in all, the big winners of the trade deadline, I will say is probably the Minnesota Wild or the Vegas Golden Knights. The big losers are probably the Predators, the Capitals, and the Red Wings. Now, Arizona, Chicago, Columbus and San Jose, they were not going to make the postseason this year. They're just preparing for next year. St. Louis, maybe if they got hot, they could sniff a playoff spot, but they're probably rebuilding for next year. And of course, we talked about the Caps and the Preds. They were they were saying, okay, we'll make the postseason, but we're not going to bank on anything on a deep run. So that's why they were big sellers. And I think Boston certainly is still the best team in the NHL. Ottawa, with the addition of Jake Chikrin, could definitely play their way into a playoff spot. The Rangers and Devils both could challenge Carolina with their additions. And the Vegas Golden Knights could certainly be the best team in the West with their additions as well. So I think that's going to wrap this trade deadline podcast up. Hope you guys will check this out and let me know what you think about these big moves that were made at the trade deadline. And let me know what you think, what teams were buyers, what teams were sellers what teams are favored to win the Stanley Cup, what teams are going to fall off and wait for next year. And be sure to check out our podcast that we did on week three inside the NHL. We'll be back next week, of course, to break down NHL the week of March 13th. So March 13th, we'll be back with more NHL talk. So be sure to join us then.